What is up? This is Los, and this is The Talking Place, episode 12. I am sorry. <laughs> uh, first and foremost, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to uh, to whoever cares. Uh, most importantly, I'm sorry to Elaine, because uh, this has been sitting, sitting here for a while. Uh, the last show that I put out was on February 3rd, and... And that was, uh, that was part one, uh, with, with Elaine. And this is part two. It should have came out the week after. But, uh, but thank you. Thank you to life for, for kicking my ass. It was, it, it was put off to the side. And I was not sure when exactly it was going to come out. And here, here I am. I mean, you know, it's, it's been almost, almost two months. And I'm just now getting the will to, to, to sit down and put it together and, and get it out. Uh, I already, I already spoke to Elaine. Uh, I already explained, uh, the feelings with it and everything like that. Absolutely nothing to do with her and absolutely nothing to do with, with the show that we did. I'm, I'm actually very proud of, of the show that I did with her. Uh, you know, I'm talking episode 11, this one too, this one was, was pretty fun too, but, uh, episode 11 was, uh, pretty much one of the, the best shows that I've ever put out for, for whatever. Uh, and, and I, I'm sorry if that hurts Beardy's feelings. Uh, I'm, I just, I just liked, uh, how, how real it was, you know, it was, uh, it was very, very much just talking down to earth and, and getting, getting feelings out and stuff like that. So, so I really, I really enjoyed where it went and I'm, I'm happy the way it came out. So I'm hoping, uh, that, that whoever is listening to this now actually listened to that one too. Uh, if you didn't go check it out, it's the, the one before this one. And, and yeah, like I said, it was, uh, this was supposed to come out back to back and I was on a roll for a while. Uh, I was doing, doing shows every week for maybe like, <laughs> I say a while and it was like a month, maybe, uh, it was maybe a little bit more than a month. I don't know, but it was, it was a lot more than what I was used to doing. So when, when I was going, 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 uh, you know, I, I found myself doing nothing but the show. And it was, it was something that, that I enjoyed doing to the point where I really liked the outcome of what was happening and what I was putting out, but it was really like feeling like it was taking up a lot of time. Uh, you know, I was, I was getting, getting stuff recorded and then I would work on the, you know, editing and show notes and, and getting stuff going. And by the time I posted it, it was time to work on the next week. And it was, it was something that, you know, it was taking up all the time that I, that I had. And I don't have a lot of time. I don't have a lot of free time. That's, that's a problem. That's, that's where the issue comes. Uh, I think that's where most of my burnt out feeling came from. Uh, it's just been a crazy year. Like it's been for everybody and you know, it's starting to really take a toll here at home. Uh, thanks, thanks to the kids being home from school all the time and, you know, having to deal with, with everything that has to come with, with at home schooling and, and all that stuff. And, you know, that's, that's just, I could go on for hours about all that crap, but, but is that, you know, it's the, the stresses of, of all the, the, you know, the, the virus and all that stuff that's still going on. You know, we're still, we're still very much, uh, wearing our mask everywhere and, and trying to maintain the distance. It seems like a whole bunch of people, uh, are, are stopping with that. And, you know, it's, it's probably the mentality that comes with, uh, getting vaccinated. There's a whole lot of vaccinations going on here in Florida. 
and uh, our ourselves, we actually we are actively trying to get booked to to get vaccinated ourselves. Uh, you know, it's it's something that we're we're looking forward to. Uh, we were, we were saying we ain't going to be the first ones in line to, to get a vaccine. And, and, uh, yeah, it's a couple of million people down already. So, uh, so we're, we're just, we're just waiting for our, for our spot in line to, to jump in there. But, but still it's very, it's still very stressful for us. Uh, we're still very much trying to not get anything. And I know the chances are going down more and more every day. So that's good. But you know, we're still, we're still scared. So we're still planted safe and everything. And, and that's still taxing, you know, it's still hard to get through and, and it sucks, but, but we're doing what we got to do. Uh, you know, the, the, the hardest part still is is the at home school because we have two kids who absolutely don't give a damn about anything with school uh so having them home it's very hard because they have so much here this is their comfort zone and it's mixed in with school and and it's like for for however many hours a day we have to make sure that uh that we separate fun and comfort and and make sure they're focusing on on studying and and school and focusing and all that stuff and it just it sucks for everybody and there's been so many fights and arguments and and all that stuff uh it's it's been hard it's been very hard so so that's uh that's where a lot of my my burnt out this came from why why I stopped uh doing anything i I stopped for a while I stopped uh trying to put shows out uh, I stopped socializing on on social media I stopped uh playing games I stopped a lot of stuff it was just every day wake up do do school do whatever I had to do and just veg out and watch t v or or whatever whatever we were doing uh we we did play a lot of pokemon go that that's that's something that we did so whenever we we got really into it everybody in the family and and we went out and we did our pokemon go thing and and that was our thing that we were doing for for a few weeks so that was good that was nice i miss it now because the kids seem like they're out of it <laughs> so so they're getting back into other things so i don't know uh, but anyway, so, so yeah, that's, that's what's been going on. That's why it's been, uh, no shows. Uh, I know everybody's been, been wondering and they've been worried and everything, but, uh, but it's okay. I'm fine. I know nobody cared, whatever. Uh, so it's, it's going on now. Uh, this is episode 12. Uh, I, I vaguely remember <laughs> recording it. Over, uh, a little bit close to two months ago, uh, but it's it's something that I I just I listened to again and I edited it and all that stuff and and it was a uh, it was a good talk with Elaine uh, another good talk uh, it was nowhere near as deep as as last episode but this is what I was hoping for I was hoping for more laid back more, you know, what you went to, what's fun and everything. And, and I tried to stay away from gaming. Uh, that was the one thing that I tried to, to focus away from, uh, a lot of people who follow both of us, uh, they, they follow our, our gaming side. Uh, you know, they, they follow us for our insights or for what we're playing or whatever like that. Uh, I wanted to show the other side of us. Uh, what what else we do, <laughs> what other things we're into, so so it was good. We got into what we're reading now. Uh, she she recommended some book that I I have in the show notes. Uh, everything everything is in the show notes. By the way, like always, uh, I tried to keep up with that. Uh, so so yeah, we talked about books. We talked about uh, TV shows that we were watching and getting into and all that stuff. And we closed it out by talking about snacks. So, so that's, that was a nice little, little closer there. 
what we discussed uh, as far as the books go. I have links in the show notes. Uh, they are they are affiliate links. So if you are curious and you want to pick them up, uh, use the links in the show notes, and that'll that'll help me out. Uh, that'll help out uh, funding for for whatever is going on, whatever the heck I'm doing. I don't know anymore. <laughs> uh, to to update to give a little personal update here uh, to you know up with the times, not something that's two months old. Uh, I'm currently listening to the audiobook of uh, the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. Uh, it is by Suzanne Collins, and it's the uh, the prequel for The Hunger Games. Uh, it came out uh, last year, sometime, and and I'm just now getting around to checking it out. I started listening to it, and it started off. Uh, kind of interesting, you know, I was, I was getting, I'm, I'm a huge Hunger Games fan. Uh, I, I really like the world and, and the build up and everything. And, and I, I went through those books, like the quickest that I've ever gone through any books ever, <laughs> even though it's something that it's one of those things that really creep me out when I think about it, especially with the way, uh, the country was going last year and everything it was it was pretty scary at times you know it was something that that if i was to to read this last year it would have been a little harder but uh but now it's it's a little easier to get through but but it's still it still gets you sometimes you know thinking about it uh it's it's really good so far uh it, it picked up and i'm about three quarters of the way through and i'm looking forward to uh to finishing it I'm actually, I hit pause on it to, to record this right here. So I, I'm looking forward to checking it out later, uh, and, and finishing it soon. Uh, also, uh, as far as, uh, TV shows go to, to update that, holy crap, WandaVision was amazing. <laughs> I, I got into it really late. Everybody was done and finished talking about it. And I, that's when I think that's when we started watching it. Uh, but we, we finished it and it was awesome. And we, we watched the first episode of winter soldier, uh, the Falcon and winter soldier. And that that's freaking amazing too. I mean, I'm, I'm blown away with how good, uh, the Marvel shows are and just, whatever the the star wars shows too i'm looking forward to everything that they're that doing disney plus is like really kicking ass and i love it uh so so yeah i'll cut this off it's been it's been a long time <laughs> it's been a while it feels like it's been a while and i'm going about 15 minutes now so so uh so let's get the show started officially uh sorry i went so long uh like I said, I feel like I, I owed some sort of explanation on, on where, where I was, why I disappeared for, for about two months and, and all that stuff. Uh, as far as future shows go, uh, I am not entirely sure, uh, when the next show is going to be. I have nothing lined up. I have nothing, uh, ready to go. Uh, there's, there's nothing, nothing going on. Like as far as what I'm working on, I have a few people who I was, uh, going to try and record with, uh, you know, over the past two months, but things fell through either on my end or, <laughs> or like in, uh, Chase's case, uh, if you know, Chase, uh, he, he came down with, uh, COVID and that was not, that was not fun. Uh, we were actually supposed to record a show together and he was like, Oh, Hey, I forgot. I'm sorry. I have, I, uh, I got COVID. I was like, Holy crap. Go, go, go rest. You know, it, it, I felt, I felt bad. I'm like, they're like, Hey, are we going to record like an idiot? Uh, so, <clears throat> but, uh, I'm glad he's doing better though. I mean, he, he is, he's on the men. He's doing good. So uh, so yeah, some, some things came up with me and, you know, I had to cancel or, you know, other stuff with other people. So, uh, I just, right now there's nothing lined up. Uh, if, if something comes up that I would feel good, uh, getting on there and, and doing whatever, then we'll do it. But 
Uh, I'm not making any promises for for any future shows right now uh, when they're coming. Uh, maybe maybe it'll come out once a month. Maybe more often. I don't know. It depends. Uh, but whatever the case, uh, enjoy this show. This is episode 12 once again, and enjoy listening to Elaine and myself talk about stuff. Have a good day, good week. I hope everything stays safe for, for everybody around you and yourself and take it easy. Peace out. I don't run the show. I don't have to have notes. It's the best. <laughs> <laughs> and she gives me this big hug. She goes, you're still going to crush it. And I'm like, thanks, kid. <laughs> Remember that when you're 14 and you hate me, okay? Please. Yep. I, I've had I've had a few, like, maybe one or two shows that I've been on that that I had nothing to do with but just sitting there talking. Oh, and it was so good. glorious. It was so great. Every time someone's like, would you like to come on? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah because i my weekly show i have to like run <laughs> and it's fine and i love doing it but it's like hard so yeah invite me on your show where all i have to do is talk about myself hell yeah let's go <laughs> oh man well you know i i'm i'm glad you're here again uh i'm, I'm can't happy. get rid of me i'm happy happy you're joining again for another week another another fun-filled week and uh and you, like i like i said before this is all this is all new to me, uh, putting out content on a weekly basis. It's been a very long time, so uh, I'm I'm still trying to get used to to the busyness and to the you know the whole work aspect of it. But uh, but yeah, so so you you are Elaine from you know we we spoke last week. If you want to give a little intro again for those who didn't listen to the last show. Or not, that's fine. Hello. 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 That's my Batman voice. It's not <laughs> <laughs> I heard it and I was like, I was like, what the hell was that? <laughs> my Batman voice. I didn't say it was good. Just oh, I miss Batman. I remember Batman now. I remember Batman. Hey, I heard so much. I'm too old for Batman. Calm down, Batman. Chill. I like that it's my Christian Bale specifically, Batman. Like it's overly gravelly and ridiculous. Like it hurts you just listening to it. Like it you just, literally hurts to yeah. do it, but then I make myself giggle so much that I can't stop. And then the next day I wake up and I'm like, oh, I feel like I swallowed rocks. <laughs> Always good. It's a good time. All right. So, uh, <clears throat> so would you like to uh, to introduce yourself again for for those who probably didn't tune in? last week if you didn't listen last week i hi i'm elaine i co-host a podcast about video games on the internet on a weekly basis called the xbox empire podcast part of the place and video games network of podcasts really like saying that it's actually really fun <laughs> i have been doing the podcasting thing since probably about 06 and have gone through a slew of shows since then some about video games and some that disguise themselves as being about video games but were really about whatever nonsense snack or beverage we could find to attempt to try that week. Um, and then we talked about video games sometimes. If we weren't in like a haze of drinking too much red line, oh, I sweat that episode, the whole episode. It was so gross. Don't drink an energy drink designed for like a gym workout and then sit still and talk. It's so bad, dude. Uh, so if you wanted to know, this is how I am all the time. Um, this is what I'm like. This is what my Twitter is like. This is what I am like on the internet. And I still will take any opportunity granted to me to tell that red line story because it almost <laughs> killed me. It tasted like peach and I almost died. <laughs> so gross. Is, is, that, is that the reason for the, for the gigantic mug of coffee every, every day? That's like tea. That's tea. I'm trying to be healthy. It's not even caffeinated tea. And I just, I think the giant mug is funny. So this mm. is, 
<laughs> what happened is I had the mug in a picture and someone's like, that mug is huge. And I'm like, well, now this is going to be a thing. This is the type of person I am, right? Like I'm, I'm going to take the dumbest joke or the dumbest bit and I'm going to run with it till I get to the point where it's almost not funny and then too far past. <laughs> I do this to my husband all the time and it just... It's my favorite game. He's like, you really enjoy taking a joke just a little too far. I'm like, mm -hmm. I love it because yep. I laugh. No one else does. <laughs> Hilarious to me. So now it's just a giant mug. That could be filled with water half the time. <laughs> it's just so I'm holding this like soup bowl size <laughs> mug on video. <laughs> That's who I am, mm. folks. So, so Hi, you, I'm Elaine. So your, your, your Lego minifigure, that's going to be the accessory to it. The giant, giant yeah. coffee mug. All right. It'll be holding a mug the size of its head. <laughs> that's that's that mug is literally, I think it's twenty ounces of liquid. Jeez. There is there is no reason that any human person <laughs> needs a mug that holds twenty ounces of liquid. And my favorite part about it is that on one side it says, Mama needs some coffee. <laughs> twenty ounces of coffee is not some coffee, girl. I think I got this thing at Target. Uh just for reference. <laughs> some coffee um if my children see me clutching that in the morning they know things are not okay oh, by the way. they know well now <laughs> now now the secret's out now now it's like it's not always coffee like for me it was always no coffee. it's usually and now now it's could be water you know it's like i feel like i've been lied to it look here's the thing if you need your head cannon to believe that it's coffee <laughs> it can be coffee for you Okay. All it's right. okay. I'm all right with people painting this headcanon that the only <laughs> liquid that I ever consume is coffee because it's not that far off from the truth. Like, it's close. Mm -hmm. Like, I drink water and sometimes tea, but the, the like list of things I consume in liquid form, very small. <laughs> sometimes an energy drink that's ill advised. Oh, so ill advised. I still think about that stuff a few years after i did that episode and then red line was the beverage that we tried which is an energy drink that is marketed towards people in gyms mm. i walked into my gym this was pre-pandemic obviously and they have like a drink like thing where you can buy drinks and there was a line of the red line and i literally shuddered <laughs> like physically shuddered like <laughs> sideshow bob <laughs> and walked I almost you're, walked right out of the gym. I was always like, I can't be here. Your I body, your body remembered. It got triggered. It was. It was I just like sweat through a t-shirt. I was. <laughs> that stuff's. That stuff's a problem. <laughs> just don't recommend. Mm. Do not recommend. But I don't. I don't know. It's like for me. Like I don't know if you could tell this about me, but energy drinks they don't do much to me. Like I don't know what it is. Like it's. Does, I think you're just built with the calm and soothing voice. Yeah, I think I, I think it's it's too it's too much laid backness. Like it's like I remember when I used to work in a kitchen, I was very much the same person <laughs> that I am. Like just uh -huh. very laid back. You know, I'd do what I had to do, and it was just like sometimes it wasn't enough for the chaos of a of a professional kitchen. And uh, I had this this sous chef that he he was determined to try and get me to 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 get up to his speed to his you know to his level, and I don't know why I even took it. Like he gave me some pills, like it looked like the type of pills. oh no, <laughs> it looked like the type of pills that you would you would get from like the gas station. Like and the caffeine ones, the no dos. Yeah, exactly. That's what it used like, to be called, right? Like it was like in a paper bag, like a little Why would you take no, it was this? like it was a plastic bag, plastic bag that like, you know, you would see in the gas station register. Like, you know, yeah. energy, like and he gave them to me. He was like, Here, take this. And it's like this is gonna boost your energy and it's gonna wake you up and it's gonna do this. And he would give me like Red Bulls and, and things like that and nothing. It would do nothing to me. Like, it's just people, like. <laughs> people like you make me nervous because I feel like Dexter is hiding within you just waiting to come out. Like, are you, is it, it people who are incredibly calm scare the hell out of me. Uh, maybe because I'm like a squirrel who snorted too much cocaine and is running laps around a backyard at all times. I'm like that uncaffeinated. I'm just like that, right? Uh, there's a reason I exercise. It's because I need to for everyone else's safety. But like people like you just stand there, watch my squirrel nonsense, calmly staring out into the abyss. And I'm like, you're going to kill everyone. It's not going to be me. It's going to be you. 
I am going to run circles around you, giggling the whole time, <laughs> like a weird, overly caffeinated accomplice. <laughs> My husband's like you, and I'm me, and I don't know how he deals with it, to be honest with you. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's it's just like whatever, you know. I mean, it's just what's that that's... like? <laughs> Does the world move slower for you? I really want to know. Like, I have so many it, questions. Like, is it different? Does everything move in slow motion? It it does. It does. I mean, it's like you, like you experienced it now. You know, like what did I tell you? Nine o'clock. And then it was like, oh, eight, island time. It was like oh, yeah. eight fifty eight, and I was like, oh, hey, you know, I'm on island time, right? You know, it's like, it's just the way I am. My wife, my wife tells me, I have appointments at a certain time when I really have them at a later time, so that I. What's I, the <laughs> What's the difference? Is it a does she have to build in thirty minutes for it's you? Like, no, it's or like tw hour? fifteen twenty minutes. It's not. It's not crazy. okay. Okay. That's not but, bad. Uh, I can deal with that. But like she, she would tell me like repeatedly, and then and it's like I'm the type, uh, like if I have to set an alarm in the morning, like I have to set it like 45 minutes before I have to wake up, and I keep me hitting, too. I keep hitting the snooze because I can't. Yeah, wake up, I like, like you know. Yeah. I'm that way too. <laughs> I'm I am a snooze monster. It's the one thing I want to do more slowly is sleep. Like why must time still operate at my cocaine squirrel oh. pace when I want to be in bed? It it drives the wife <laughs> insane because her like she she gets one alarm. Like it'll be going off for like two seconds and she's up and she's hitting the button and she's ready to get up, you know? And me, it, no. Just just no. That's that's not. I, that's not I feel like we married the opposite gendered version of the same person. So my husband is one of those people. Once he's up, he's up, and yeah. his grandpa butt gets up at like five thirty a.m. And I'm like, sir, <laughs> it's still dark. And he goes, I'm up though. And I'm like, sir, um, <laughs> no, right? And me, I will snooze until the last possible second. And I'm the chick who throws on jeans and a t-shirt, or jeans and a button-up, boots no makeup, pulls my hair back, and I'm out mm -hmm. the door in like 14 minutes and 30 seconds. <laughs> I'm just that girl. I've always been that girl. I don't care, right? And he takes longer to get ready than me, which cracks me up. Mm -hmm. Like, you're so pretty. <laughs> <laughs> I, tell, I tell him that all the time, and he is. Like, he's, he's the attractive one for sure. But like, he's just one alarm and he's up, and I'm like, but why? <laughs> but and he's also, it's also infuriating because he's the person who lays down in bed at night. And I don't know if your wife is like this and yeah. just goes to sleep in yeah. 10 minutes. Yes. Is he a sociopath? Who <laughs> does it? Who doesn't have the moment where their brain goes, hey, 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 remember that thing you did in fifth grade? Do you remember? Boy, that was stupid for four hours, right? I want, I want the life that he yeah. lives. <clears throat> I want his life. It's like my, my wife does that she'll lay down and then she'll she'll be like saying all right good night you know love you and like literally two minutes later she's asleep i and, hate it and it's like i i get my moments <clears throat> that i'm i'm like that i mm -hmm. get i get my my days where where i'm tired and i'm yes. like i need to sleep and i'll i'll lay there and i'll fall asleep and it'll be like really quick but most of the time, most of the time yes. I'm, I'm, I'm up. I'm, I cannot, I cannot go to sleep. I need to, uh, to decompress and de desensitize and, and, you know, just even, even now, like I'll get into bed tonight, like midnight and, Same. and I'll be there just on the phone. Just like, I need, I need yep. the time to chill and to like, it's like when you put a new fish into a fish tank. <laughs> You know, it has to acclimate yeah. itself to the other. Yeah, fish. <laughs> you got to keep it in the bag. You know, that's that's that's. Oh God, doing. it's like when you get a new cat and you have to lock one in the bathroom <laughs> so they can smell each other under the door. That's my <laughs> my brain does this thing where I'm like, I'll be bone weary, exhausted, right? I'll be not able to keep my eyes open. Mm. I'll crawl into bed. And I'll be closing my eyes, and all of a sudden, my brain is a J Lo song screaming, "Let's get loud," <laughs> you know, really loudly for no reason mm -hmm. and then starts like let's just run through all the the time city that we probably embarrassed ourselves <laughs> in front of someone and i'm like brain if we're gonna do this and like who am i to argue with your process 
<laughs> can we at least make it the good things that happened today and not the time I tripped and then had to pretend I was running for a block so that I didn't look like I just tripped over nothing on the street? Can we just focus on like that the mm. cup of coffee that was good this morning that I didn't spill on my pants for once? <laughs> just a suggestion. I'm just making suggestions here. And my brand says, I'm sorry, that's not in the protocol. And the book is closed. <laughs> and we relive fourth grade all over again. <laughs> It's always an adventure in there. <laughs> yep. Yeah, for for me, for me it's it's more uh it's more just like trying to relax and then it's like something will pop in my head. And it's usually like God, a song. It's usually a song or something. And, oh, okay. And it's like and it's like, all right, let me put let me put my AirPods on and I put my AirPod. And then I start I start listening to music. I'm a I'm a Broadway guy. Like I'm a Okay. I listen to to musicals sometimes. So uh so like I'll be there in bed like my eyes closed and just like one <laughs> o'clock in the morning listening to Hamilton, like just you know, as if as if I'm reliving my high school days on stage. Like, you know, it's I I'm so, I think yours is better. Like if <clears throat> I did the music thing, I listen to EDM. So it'd be like we're having a rave now. Like at 1 a.m. That's not productive <laughs> for sleep. So if I do the thing where I go down the rabbit hole, right? Because I am super like earworms are a problem for me. Like a song yes. will get in my head and it will not oh, leave. But God. if I, Sea if at like 1 a.m. I'm like, I'm going to get it out of my head by listening to it. No, because then I'm like, where did I put those glow sticks? <laughs> you see, this is why I can't have nice things. And I'm like, eh, maybe I'll just go downstairs and put all the hue lights on different colors. And you know, and then I'm like, it's 3 a.m. And I'm like, I am too old for this. So I can't do music. Like Broadway at least makes you less of a sociopath. <laughs> me. Yeah. The, and lately, lately, uh, like the past four days, it's been uh, sea shanties. Uh, oh, good. Like, yeah. That went around Twitter for, for a minute. Oh, man. I got, I got on it late. And it's just been like, holy crap! What what was I doing? Not not listening to this. They're so good. They're so good. Yep. And so ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I play a lot of Assassin's Creed Valhalla right now, so I get a lot of the songs. Mm -hmm. I get a lot of Viking shanties, and it's pretty yes. good. Not you know, gonna lie. I, I was. Uh, I just. I turned it on the other day for uh, for the first time since since leaving it to go play Miles. And like I just got to the area, like the first like main uh place where all your people are. Yeah. And yep. and whenever whenever I got into the ship before that, it, there was a button for for singing, and it never worked. And I I finally got into the boat, and they started singing, and I got so happy. Like I was like, <laughs> finally you're singing. It was like it's the little things. <laughs> It's the little things. We're all, all video game people are fine. We're fine. Yeah. It takes so little to make us happy. Oh, the Vikings are singing in the ship again. <laughs> it's so stupid. I played my, when I was playing with my kids, inevitably, as soon as I pick up a controller, well, they have Xboxes. So when they see me go online on my Xbox, they like want to know what I'm playing because mm -hmm. it's probably way more violent and terrible yes. than what they're playing because yep. they're playing Minecraft. And my daughter would be like, can you make, can you make them do anything besides sing? And I'm like, but why? <laughs> and she's like, because I'm like, no, 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 that's not how this works. This is a dictatorship in the basement. They will sing the shanties and you will like it. <laughs> yeah. They, the, my kids, they're, they're always like looking like trying to, trying to do whatever with what I'm playing. Uh, especially the oldest. He's like more intrigued with, like you said, like all the violent stuff and everything. And, uh, and I remember when, when, Red Dead Redemption 2 came out. Uh like I was I was all into it and trying to get into it. And it was one of the one of the earlier missions uh where you're where you're robbing a train. And Yes. <laughs> and and I started playing it with with him in the room and I told myself I was like I'm not going to get into like anything bad. You know, because he's here, he's watching me. I don't want him to to see anything bad or hear anything bad. So I was like, you know, riding my horse around or whatever like that, and and then uh, and then I remembered, oh yeah, the next mission is is the whole train thing. So he went to go do something, and I started the mission, and he came back, 
And he was like, so what are you doing in there now? And I'm like, oh, nothing. I'm just here, like, you know, putting something on the, on the track or whatever. <laughs> and waiting for him to leave, he just kept there watching. And, and, um, <laughs> and like, it, it goes on and it's like, he puts on the, uh, the, the bandana around the face. And he was like, why'd you do that? Why'd you put that on? Are you going to rob the train? It's like, no, I'm not going to rob the train. And like the freaking bomb explodes, derails the train, shooting everybody. He's like, you're robbing the train. I was like, no, I'm not. And I had to turn it off. I was like, no, I can't do it. Can't. My kids are, it. it's funny because my kids are completely like, they'll roll their eyes at me. I'm like, you guys probably shouldn't watch this. And my daughter will go, mom, it's a video game. Like, <laughs> Uh, she's very and they it doesn't bother them they don't um not that i like expose them to horrendous violence all the mm. time or anything like that but they they'll just be like it's just mom we know it's fake <laughs> they're so worldly in that particular way um and it's maybe a little disturbing mm. but they're also my children so really maybe it's expected like but my husband's like this too because like we've watched some scary movies with them and like he's just like they know like if they if he he and I kind of have this philosophy with kids. If they can't separate it from reality, then they can't watch it. Yeah. But if they're chill and they understand that it's not real and they can like rationalize that, it's fine uh-huh. um, within limits of like, well, I'm not letting them watch Saw on a Sunday <laughs> afternoon. Okay. Just before people start sending me the tweets, <laughs> calm yourselves. All right. <clears throat> when I say they can watch, they, there are rules in my home. All mm-hmm. right. Like the 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 best example I have is the first Halloween film. It's not. I mean, it's a slasher movie, but the gore is not over the top for little kids, right? Mm. They wanted to watch it, and we started watching it. And my son's biggest complaint with this film, he goes to me, he goes, "Mom, <laughs> movie is stupid." Okay. <laughs> well, please explain. He goes, "How would he know how to drive a car if he's been in that institution for sixteen years?" <laughs> like, there's no there. <laughs> They completely like I'm like, you've ruined it for me. <laughs> I can't watch that film and not think about that now. He's like, this yeah. is dumb. <laughs> it's like this isn't even scary. I'm like, what have I just what have I raised? <laughs> I have no fear. He's like, it's... I was just not gonna be able to how does he know how to I don't know how to drive a car. I haven't been in a mental institution for 16 years. I'm like, oh my god. What oh, man, have was, I done? What have I done? Smart kids are a real problem. Uh, <laughs> It's like smart dogs. It's a real problem. So <laughs> it's just, I love them so much. But also, oh my God, I'm so tired. <laughs> oh, man. Yep. What are you going to do? You, you, you're doing something right, it, it seems like. It, they um, have a very good, firm sense and grasp of reality, yeah. um, which I'm proud of. But also, sometimes I just, I just need to sit down yeah. when they say things like that to me. I'm like, <laughs> I don't need to take a knee. You find something to do for a minute. I'm going to go sit in the bathroom and contemplate my life choices. Okay. Okay, cool. Talk. <laughs> All right. So, uh, so we got, uh, we, we talked kids, we talked family, <clears throat> we talked, uh, some gaming and all the, all the personal things last episode. Uh, so for gaming, uh, you mentioned that you were not playing, uh, much or you, you know, it was hard to get into stuff. Uh, you have been reading. What have you been reading? I have been reading. So I read um, Norse mythology okay. by by our friend Neil. I, I okay. may I may have uh, asked you that knowing that that's what you read because I want to talk about it. It's a really, <laughs> really good book. Um, I've been sitting yeah, on a physical copy of this book for a long time. Yeah. I bought it in a fit of like I read American Gods and I liked it. And I was like, well, I'll buy Norse mythology. And it was probably around the time God of War came out. If I, the newest one if i'm real serious about it and then i was like busy and didn't read books right yep. um and i finally dipped into it and it's one of those books that you just i read it in like three sittings mm-hmm. i'm a very fast reader in fairness but i'm a very slow what, reader i don't know if you could tell that about me you you have a speed <laughs> okay I'm not gonna say this anything my husband's a slow reader i don't know if your wife does this but sometimes i hold the foot my phone up to my husband to yeah. make him read a funny <laughs> caption and i just go oh god please like he's just there for so long like yeah. sir it's like 15 words i'm like how do you get anything done yeah it's <laughs> um, the same thing my wife is she reads very fast like she's she's done real quick and me i'm just there like setting second sentence trying to process it like okay oh my, God. my husband's like this too and we're just different <laughs> like my brain 
my brain ingests written words really, really quickly. And mm. it, it does a lot of like the speed reading tricks that I never intentionally do, but it fills blanks in really easily. So this book, I'm probably, it probably was four hours of actual reading time if I really look at it. Mm. So if you're a fast reader, it goes quick. But I like the way he tells those kind of tales as old as time. Yep. You know, like he has a, a way with them and a, they're light and fun and... <clears throat> Uh, interesting to read. It's great. I highly recommend it. If you are interested in Viking things at all, mm -hmm. you should read Norse mythology. <clears throat> yeah, it's it's a, a huge recommendation for me too because I I read it You've... like a year ago or so. Okay. Maybe. Okay. Uh, it's it was it really stood out to me uh, the way the stories were drawn out and the way uh, the characters were were like you know explained and detailed and all that stuff uh it was yes. it was very very easy to to picture everything in your head and i don't know if you did this but for me like i pictured uh the movie movie thor and loki like in my head yeah i did too that's yeah. really hard to shut off yeah for me now mm -hmm. uh and i don't necessarily love either of those depictions in like a Greek mm. or a Norse God sense, but like, I cannot not see it that yeah, way. Exactly. It's very yeah. <laughs> it was, it was something it, it helped me, but at the same time, it's like, there was things that happened in that book that it was, it's not Disney. It's not. <laughs> yes. Oh no, definitely not. It's definitely like the angered old gods. For, it's the God of war version. Yeah. It's the angry gods version. Mm -hmm. And that's the way that Viking stuff was. And he explains it in the beginning of the book is like, yeah, a lot of like Vikings were afraid of their gods for the most part. Mm -hmm. Like they weren't hunky dory with them. <laughs> um, and then you read it and you're like, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> He has a very like unique way with language, and if you're not a reader or an audiobook person, which is something mm. I'm starting to dip into, I think he narrates the book himself. Yeah, he does. He um, and he has a good voice. So if you're looking for something to just put on in the dark, like I do now, um, <laughs> it's a good one. That because I also own that. I guess I got it free from Audible at some point in my life. Who knows? Things oh, happen. Okay. So. Yeah, I I uh, I read. Well, I didn't read. <laughs> I did the the audiobook for uh what was it for his book his other book American the, Gods The Grave Graveyard Oh okay The Graveyard um, Child story something I forget the actual title but yes I know what you mean I have not read that yeah, one yet that in, one, I got I got like halfway through it and he he narrates that too I think he narrates all his books probably I think he does. And it should be noted that like, I love a good audiobook narrator. Um, yep. What's the book that I want? It was about the zombies. Oh God, it escapes me. And it's, it's <laughs> the audiobook is an abridged version and it is narrated with a different person for each character. Mm. And it is so good. And I will think of it as we are talking. And the other one is Tina Fey's book, Bossy Pants. She narrates herself, and holy oh, crap, okay. it's hilarious. She's so good. I heard that was a good book. I never read it, though. It's, just, it's a really interesting take on her life, yeah. and I, I recommend it. Um, the other book that I just started actually today is called The Power. It's mm. by Naomi Alderman, and it is... <clears throat> a book about a world in which women and girls get this, like lightning power ability but men don't uh, and how the the situation in society shifts as a function of it and it's wild. <laughs> i'm only a couple like i'm only like a tenth of the way in so it's hard for me to you know but it's it's really really good and everybody i mention it to is like yo that book i'm like okay <laughs> so um world war z is the zombie book oh uh, okay of. all right narration on that audiobook is awesome because of the way it is told. So mm -hmm. the power is one I would probably recommend to any female and some men <laughs> who've really spent a lot of the last four and a half years pissed off. <laughs> you want, you want to have some place to channel your rage into. Mm -hmm. It's funny because an actress that I really love, Kate Siegel, she started a second Instagram just for like book recommendations. Uh. Her pithy caption for this book was so good. It was kind of along those lines of just like, are you a woman in 2020 with a lot of pent up rage? It was, she's a freaking national treasure, dude. And I love her. 
um, I got this book off her suggestion and I'm like, you know, whatever, a couple chapters in, and I'm like, yeah, no, this is, this is good. <laughs> I needed this today. <laughs> yeah. You're gonna, you're gonna have to, <clears throat> to link me to it. I'll put it in the show notes for, okay. for those interested. Absolutely. I'll probably link you to, to Kate Siegel's Instagram too. She, like yeah. I said, she is a national treasure. Her regular Instagram is fine, but her Kate loves books. One is where it's at. That's where you want to be. <laughs> yeah. I, I, uh, I, I'm, I got a few, I got a few audio audiobooks. Uh, I was listening to, well, there was one that I haven't finished yet that I just like, I dab into here and there. Uh, it's like my, my comfort food audiobook. Fair enough. <laughs> and it's uh it's the alchemist and it's read oh, read by yes. Jeremy Irons and I've heard freaking, very good things about that. Yeah, it's very good things. It's good. It's uh it's something that I want to finish, but whenever I go to listen to it, it's always like bedtime. And yes. <laughs> and <laughs> Jeremy Irons uh you know, you know his voice and the way you know the way he the way he talks is like very, uh, very soothing. So it's very quick to put me, to knock me out. So it's one of those books where I really don't remember much, but I feel like I've read it a hundred times. Yep. <clears throat> and, uh, and then I read, uh, or I listened, I keep saying read. I listened to the Witcher, the first two books of the Witcher series. And hey, those are excellent. And, and for, Witcher is probably my favorite fantasy series. I feel like I've said this on a lot of podcasts recently. It's my Lord of the Rings. Yes. Now some people have that like very deep connection to Lord of the Rings, mm -hmm. or and or my Dune for the sci-fi folks out there. Some people really attach to Dune. Yep. Witcher is mine, and those first two books. My husband's actually read the first two books. Are short story books, yes. and they jump around in time in much the same way the the sh first season of the show does. The ones after that are one arc and are exceptional. So. Yeah. so I, I have not gotten into the, to the other ones yet. So, Do it. <laughs> so basically it's going to be, uh, you know, like a whole big series of like one thing, basically it's not short stories anymore after. after right. The it's, it's Cirilla's arc. It's her, her growing up okay. arc and her discovering who she is arc. And it's, and I mean, Geralt is all there too, and it's, it's his story as well. But for the yeah. most part, it reads as her tale with his like life crisscrossing with it. Um, gotcha. it. Those books are really, really, really good. And then the last book, the most recent one released, is another short story collection, and I think it once again jumps through that that time. Oh, okay. I can forth and all around. For those of you who have watched the show, that first season is basically taking the first two books worth of short stories and making them into a show. Oh. That's kind of how it works. And we might get the second season this year. I'm very hopeful. Yeah. And that should start Cirilla's arc. So Yeah. I yeah. I haven't I haven't watched the the show yet. It's on my list of, of things to watch. It's up there oh, buddy. on that list. And uh and knowing that it's following the two books, like it makes me excited because I, I think really you're know. in a really good position because people struggled with the time periods in the show. Because oh, yeah. it does, it does, it jumps in time, but doesn't always explain itself when it does it. Uh, okay. Um, but since you've read the short stories, you're accustomed to how it goes. You yeah. know, um, that was one of my comfort shows that I watched twice this year, uh. just because <laughs> I wanted to go back to something I was familiar with and made me feel happy. That was that, and two <laughs> scary series that I have not been able to put away. But I cannot recommend The Witcher more as someone who likes the fiction a great deal. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, is uh is Dandelion uh portrayed good in the show? Yes. I I think uh, he's hilarious. That, legitimately. That like he's my, not as <laughs> That was the 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 thing that got me like really pushing to to finish the the first two books. Like he was my favorite throughout the whole thing. He he's so quippy and sarcastic and just mm. like I he gives you your <laughs> laugh out loud moments and I think that you know, Henry Cavill's Geralt is exceptionally good. Like it, I was not sold when it was announced. I was like, ugh. And then he's now. I can't see anyone else being that character. Yeah, that's good. It's, it's and Anna. Um, oh, I forget her last name. The woman who plays Yennefer is very, very good. 
She's so I love there's a line that she delivers and I won't give you any context, but she looks at Geralt after he like explains a bunch of stuff and basically tells him not to mansplain her. She looks at him and goes, <laughs> Yes, please explain to me how stuff works. And I'm like, Oh girl. <laughs> so good and pure i love her she's fantastic uh that was a great moment and i just i looked at right at my husband he's like fantasy series mansplaining you don't do that to the crazy sorceress it's a bad move on a good move great show highly recommend great show sounds good i gotta watch it so uh so books books are books are a thing that you you get into what else do you watch any other shows with the husband yeah so let's see i'm trying to think we went through um cobra kai Oh, in its entirety that's on my list too i need to watch that we just i'm not going to spoil anything i'm just going to say that show has no right to be as good as it is <laughs> and it's great like it, it there's no, it has no right to be that good it makes me actually almost angry but my kids got into it too and then we rewatched the first three karate kid movies not fourth i hate that film i really just like it wait wait, wait. The, when you say when you say the fourth uh is it the one with the girl or is it the one yes. uh, with jackie chan yes. and right. the, the the girl is is hillary swank and yeah. It's awful. yeah 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 I remember. so bad the it's first so three long. karate kid movies each have redeeming qualities and i would if i was hard pressed i would say the second movie is my favorite mm -hmm. um oh god <clears throat> i hate so deeply that fourth one i dislike it so I'm like, <laughs> uh i'm fine it's fine so we watched all of that some of that with the kids uh what else did my husband and i go through so i decided right around halloween no let me let me tell this how it actually happened we watched the haunting of bly manor when it came out in october mm -hmm. it's probably we also watched queen's gambit i think personally the haunting of bly manor is my favorite piece of content that was released this year my family preferred queen's gambit i was interested in queen's gambit that that that, that had me intrigued did you watch it? No, I, I was I yeah. saw I saw a preview for it and everything and and uh and I was I was into chess uh in my my previous life. <laughs> so it is a wonderful character study on her char like the her character yeah. and Anna Joy Taylor is amazing in that show. I also had one of my most difficult to watch pieces of television of the year. There is an episode like she's I won't spoil I will say that she has an addiction problem and yeah. they show her hit rock bottom in an episode. Yeah. And this is a thing that they unveil right from the get go, by the way, this is not a spoiler, <laughs> like right away. And, um, watching that happen to a person. Okay. is hard. It turns out. Yeah. Um, and I struggled with that, but I, it is a masterfully edited, paced and acted piece of television. Yeah. I really recommend you watch it. <laughs> It's still not my favorite piece of television this year. Uh, Haunting of Bly Manor is probably my favorite piece of television this year. Mm. So I, we watched it, my husband and I, together. And then I decided, because I hate myself, that at night, when everybody goes to bed, I'm going to rewatch The Haunting of Hill House. <laughs> Haunting of Hill House is so much scarier than The Haunting of Bly Manor. It's so terrifying that I think I had... I don't think I slept super good for a full... <laughs> Like, I ended up at the end being like, I'm going to watch two episodes a night so that I end this torture. It's so mm. good. And Kate Siegel is in it. She's also in Bly Manor. She's one of my favorite, probably one of my favorite actresses. Mm. But Hill House is so good. But Hill House is so scary. And I'm so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Just like, <laughs> curled up under blankets, blanket, sleeping on the couch so I could sleep next to the dog. Because oh, I'm God. like, you're taking by the ghost. <laughs> you see, I, I can't do that. Like, I... I used to do, I think, you know, this is, this is sounding familiar. I think we had this talk with Chaffee when we were doing the Halloween episode for Delvin. Uh, it was, it's, it's like, I can't do scary. Like, I used Enough. to be able to, I used to be able to, I used to be able to, to watch scary movies, scary shows, all that stuff, like nothing. But it's like, I hit a point in my life where like, it just, scared the crap out of me like it messes me up i can't sleep i get nightmares you know and all that stuff and and it's like i i just i'd rather not watch something that's gonna freak me out and mess me up i totally understand it like for years actually i couldn't watch horror my husband's favorite genre is horror that's hmm. what he loves um and i didn't like it it turned out that it exacerbated my anxiety 
mm-hmm. we discussed like kind of last episode. And yeah. it's like, I, the tension ratcheted me to a level that I couldn't separate like, like with my kids reality from fake and mm. it triggered an anxiety response or an anxiety attack. So I couldn't do horror huh. and roping my mental health under control allowed me to enjoy it because I can now separate my personal anxiety from like a feeling that's being forced by a piece of media, if yeah. that makes sense. Um, and now I actually kind of like it. Cause let me tell you, you get a good jump scare and there's an adrenaline dump that happens. And you're like, <laughs> I'm going to go run five miles <laughs> and then pass out in the bathroom before I even get my shoes on because, Whoa, <laughs> it's like, there is a moment in, I think it's episode eight of Hill house that scared me so bad. The first time I saw it, that I yeeted a drink up into the air, <laughs> water went everywhere. It was completely unexpected. It was a legitimate, it was a good moment. Cause it led to one of the best monologues in the show, but mm. water went, I jumped so hard. That the glass of water I was holding, the water just like, I was, <laughs> my husband just looked over and he goes, what happened? <laughs> I was like, water. Oops. <laughs> just, I like a good, I like a good scare. I just don't like a lot of gore. Yeah. Can't do the gory stuff. Um, so I think, I think the bulk of it, and then I started watching Peaky Blinders. Which, I, yeah. I heard about that one. I never, never got into that one. Post world war one, uh, mm-hmm. London mob movie. Like just take like the Sopranos vibe, but inject it into that time period and place, and it's very good. Um, yeah. I like it because it's like they're one-hour episodes, but there's only six of them in a season. Good. I like it when a show closes an arc. Yeah. Quickly. Yeah. You know I what I mean, I don't want to wait around for thirty episodes. Your dumb <laughs> show. All right. I think more more shows need to do that. Like it's. This it's... is why I, I I like um Queen's Gambit or Haunting. Because they're contained miniseries. Yeah. Not don't need a twelve season arc of Arrow <laughs> to be happy. Please stop yeah. making you know, those shows. It's, it's like the uh, when because the wife and I uh, we we watch shows together a lot, and she she has her shows that she watches when she's uh, working, quote unquote. You know. <laughs> Yes. She she's always she's always working. She's in her office. She has she has off time <clears throat> and she'll be watching whatever sometimes something. But uh the shows that we watch, uh we we have uh <laughs> Gilmore Girls. Uh we It's a forever show. Yeah, yep. It's it's something that she got me into and uh and I just love I love the humor of it and it's something that really uh really gets me i don't know like i i can't yeah. turn down an episode of gilmore girls i don't know call me yeah, call i have me this relationship fashion. with friends yeah like friends I, too friends too yep. i just i hear the lines and i can quote them in time <laughs> and i still watch it and i still go he, 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 yeah. along with all the jokes so i feel you I feel you and uh and did you ever watch bunheads no no Bun- i never did oh man bunheads like i was so sad like talking about it now I'm going to get sad again and upset that it was canceled. Like it was, it was just so, it was so good. That's, <clears throat> that's what got me into, uh, into Gilmore girls because it's the okay. same, the same creators, uh, the same, uh, the same mother is in there is playing, oh. playing a mother too. It's like different characters, different setting, different everything, you know, but it just has a very, very similar feel to to gilmore Mm -hmm. it's like it's updated gilmore girls basically but but it only lasted like a season season and a half oh that's too bad yeah and it was it was so funny and so good and it was it was like i wanted more of it (laughs) and and it got canceled (laughs) and i was so sad and Uh and then and then you got gilmore girls that uh that i love i love watching with the wife she she already watched them when they came out so okay. she she okay. knows it all, and we wanted to watch uh, all of the old ones before we watched the the new ones on Netflix. And, and we can't yeah. we can't because there's like ten nine ten episodes and each ep- I mean seasons, and, and they have twenty something episodes because like, yeah, it was 20, for 20, 30 something yes. episodes. Yeah, it's, it's too ridiculous. much television. <laughs> <laughs> it's like why can't you just like. 
condense it a little bit, you know? I don't know. Oh, I wish there was like a, a recap one episode per season situation. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But the joy of shows like that for me is definitely in the bit. And But the kind of show that like I accidentally turn on TBS at night and a Friends episode is playing and I'm like, well, mm. I guess we're doing this now. Yep. <laughs> it's on in the background while I cook dinner. I don't need to watch those anymore. I've seen them so many times. <laughs> oh, it's it's embarrassing, actually. Yeah. I, I know, I know. And I, I feel like with Friends, uh, it's like there's 10 seasons, right? That's what it is? Yes, there were 10. Yep. I, I feel like I've seen like only one or two seasons. Because like, <laughs> they're watched, always on. Yeah. yeah, I've watched so much Friends. And I feel like I only watched one or two seasons because it's like the same episodes all the time that I see. And even when my, my wife, she, she's watched, uh, the seasons like a few times, like, you know, the whole thing in, in entirety. And like, there's episodes that I would see and I'd be like, I've never seen that before in my life. And it's <laughs> like, it, it, there's, there's other episodes that I could freaking like, you know, quote, and it's like, you know, I, I feel like I, I'm missing out. Like, I don't, I feel like I don't know this show that I say that I like. You know? Oh man. I, um, boy, this is a weird fact. <laughs> I, when I first moved in my first apartment, I was still in college. I lived alone. I didn't have enough money for cable television. So I owned the full complete set of friends on the 10 DVD sets. Yes. Yep. And I would literally like start at season one and I would just come home. And because I lived alone, I always wanted like background noise. I yeah. was so used to being in dorms and being around people. My husband, my now husband, then boyfriend hadn't moved in yet. So I would just put on friends, right? Talking. Mm -hmm. And I would, when I hit the end of the 10th season, I would just loop back to the first one. So <laughs> I think I have absorbed it into my very psyche. Do you know, like in... In the Matrix, when he like jacks in and gets like kung fu, it's yeah. that but friends quotes. They're just in there. I will make jokes that no one knows where they came from but me because they are some obscure line from that stupid show. And my husband just looks at me sometimes and he goes, "That's from Friends." Yeah, I know this because of the giggle after you delivered the line. It's funny, and I can play the episode in my head, you know? Some people do this with The Simpsons. I had a friend who was like this with yeah. The Simpsons. Yeah. Maybe maybe that's uh, subconsciously, that's where the giant coffee mug came, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's a Central Park mug. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> that's why I, I called even... to you in Target, because, you know, it, it resonated with your, your deep connection to friends. I Look, I have... <laughs> There's a lot of Monica Geller in my very soul. Like, there's an episode where she's laying in bed and they dare her to go to sleep without putting her shoes in the spot they're supposed to go in. <laughs> they're teasing her about her need to clean up and put everything where it goes. Mm. And she's like, I can do it. I can just go to bed and leave my shoes here. And she's laying in bed until like three o'clock in the morning. Like, I should just get up and move them. It me. <laughs> everything has its place. And when things are in the place, it upsets me. I'm not as much of a clean freak, but I have... I'm a neat freak. I need things to be, it's like I identify with this. And my husband watched that episode and he just looked at me and I'm like, I know who I am. This is not new information to me, sir. Like, leave me alone and put the peanut butter back in the same place in the pantry with which you extracted it from or I will kill you. <laughs> it's all love in this house, you see. Oh, man. I feel, I feel like Friends could be another show. That's another, another podcast. I could do this all day. I could yeah. scream pivot into a microphone yeah. for hours. Don't <laughs> uh, so, uh, so yeah, we like, we, like I said, we had good more girls. Uh, we try to watch this is us. Like that's, that's our more current one that we, I don't think I could do that one. Yeah. I've heard it's sad. It is so like real, like it's very, yeah. it's very, uh, real, real life kind of, kind of thing. Uh, I'd rather be scared by ghosts. <laughs> I can't. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> and you know, it's like, and this, this season, the one that, uh, that we're watching right now, uh, it's the most current one because the first episode, it was, uh, bringing in, 
uh, aspects of the pandemic and the quarantine. Ah, uh, yes. Like the uh, the characters in the show, the first episode, like they were, they were all gathered around the TV watching the news and the news was talking about this virus that's coming from from china and and how it's it's like creeping over and stuff so it's like it's mimicking what's going on in in you know in real life and all that so <clears throat> so it's uh yeah i i understand preferring <laughs> preferring ghosts to real life yeah it's, i just would rather yeah. be scared or um <laughs> in the case of bly manor it's it's a no it's a gothic romance it's mm. not it's a ghost story but it's not so it's let's watch that show so good <clears throat> so uh so yeah so let me see judging by my my laptop battery i i'd say <laughs> <laughs> i'd say we we have about another 10 minutes so uh okay fair so you mentioned earlier in the show uh, that you, you used to have a podcast where where you went off on tangents about random snacks. So, True. Uh, so what, what's been going on now in, in your life? Like, what is your, what's your go-to snacks that you're going with <sighs> these days? I love it when people ask me about snacks. <laughs> I get so excited. I'm like a raccoon who's discovered a full bagel in a garbage can <laughs> when people ask me about snacks. I like to paint a word picture for you people. Um, well, I also love bagels. Uh, I have... I always let me tell you what I always have in my home. There's always a package of Oreos in my home. Mm. Usually a double stuff, sometimes standard issue, often hidden below something so the tiny <laughs> children don't eat them all before <laughs> I get to them. Uh, I currently am eating my way through the holiday Oreos with the red cream. Oh, it's okay. standard flavor. Mm. They just taste better. Yeah. Do not at me. <laughs> I, agree. I agree. The Halloween ones are my favorite, though. Um, I also always I eat a lot of Takis because I, I like a, I like salting my taste buds with uh, citric acid. <laughs> That's really, what it is like they're not that spicy. They're just so much citric acid in those. Mm. And I do this thing where I eat snacks that will color my fingers the color of what I imagine every college male's hands is perpetually. <laughs> um, I eat them with chopsticks yep, so that I don't. Get the go. dust on my hands because mm -hmm. I don't like that, and my children make fun of me. <laughs> We've reached the stage where I eat like cheese puffs, takis, and Fritos because they're so greasy with chopsticks, and my children are like, "Mom, really?" And I'm like, "This keyboard cannot be cleaned again. <laughs> I disinfected it so many times during this pandemic; it may stop working." <laughs> so. Those are like the big go-tos. We also always have Ritz in my house, and I put cream cheese on them. Uh, that, that's that's new. I never never heard about cream cheese on Ritz. People usually put peanut butter on them or cheese because they're yeah. not weird. But I love cream cheese, and I will put it on any vehicle mm -hmm. with which it, it can go on. So toast, bagel, is, Ritz crackers. That's respectable. I love cream <clears throat> cheese. I think the I think the chopstick thing is a. Uh, is going to change some people's lives when they when they Genius. think about that. <laughs> it also gives you practice eating with chopsticks. Yeah. It also keeps you from shoving half the bag of snacks into your face hole <laughs> all at once. That that's a problem. Um, yep. I I eat a lot of food with chopsticks actually, stuff that isn't just like Chinese takeout because I I have a tendency to eat too fast. Um because I have children and they're always asking for something and if you want to eat a hot meal in a house with children, you better yeah. eat it fast. Yep. I don't need to consume 1,400 calories in nine minutes. <laughs> so try to stick with the chopsticks because my brain has a chance to keep up <laughs> and slow me down. So I use them for like everything. I have a pair that are um, lightsabers, Darth Vader lightsabers, and I have a pair that have Totoro on them. I love the Totoro ones. I'm a grown-up, bro. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. I'm a grown-up <clears throat> adult. <laughs> so uh, so what is what is it like? Do you, do you feel like compared to years ago, like your, your, has your snacking changed? Like, has it been dumbed down? Is there more, uh, you, are you thinking more, more, uh, more positive? I mean, I remember before the show you used to run, 
like you would get all sorts of different things. Didn't you, didn't you try like different ones every episode? Is that how it went? Oh yeah, we got all yeah. kinds of dumb stuff. I still do that. I still <laughs> like if I, cause there's a couple of like bloggers that I follow on Instagram that post when like new weird snacks are out and I will go and hunt them down. I mean, this is pre pandemic <laughs> now. I'm not going to target just to look for new Oreos cause I'm yeah. not an animal. But um, if somebody posted like, yo, <laughs> Dunkaroos are back at 7-Eleven, I'll be like, see, in 10 minutes, I'm going for a run. I totally do that. I do that with ice cream flavors, too. Whenever there's new ice cream flavors, oh, I man. always want to try. Forget about it, ice cream. Love, love ice cream. So <clears> I eat <throat> same different, like the same breath of snacks. I just take like one or two bites. That's how I, people always ask me that. They're like, oh, you eat so many things. And I'm like, yes, but I like, one, I exercise a lot. And two, I don't eat, I don't finish the whole thing. I'm not... There's no way I could consume that many calories. <laughs> I eat like two or three bites, then I put it away. Or I, sh I have three other people who live in this house. I make them, I subject them to my weird snacks all the time. <laughs> it's fun to see kids' faces when they eat something that genuinely is like weird. Oh, it's so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> is there anything? Is there anything that stands out? Like, what's like the weirdest? Like the weirdest. Boy, thing that you, you oh, know? the weirdest thing I've ever had was uh, a, a listener. <laughs> to one of them to the podcast and he's still i mentioned him in the last episode marcus he sent me he's from sweden and mm -hmm. he sent me a bunch of like swedish candies and <laughs> they're salted black licorice dude <laughs> and i was not prepared like you open the package and i can't i don't read the language and they're <laughs> these little black licorice balls that are that look like they're coated in sugar oh man it's not sugar <laughs> is salt i've never had an experience like that and i wish i still had them and i'm gonna have to see if i can get some off ebay because i want to watch i want to do this to my children oh man i'm a month <laughs> i'll be like here have a candy from sweden no one i love black licorice so like i was fine with that <laughs> and i like salt but oh buddy um <laughs> coated in salt it's such a wild combination it's probably the weirdest thing i've ever eaten i've drank that red line that i still have nightmares about <laughs> keach flavored nightmare fuel uh i'm trying to think if there's any, been anything really weird recently what what what's uh, the what what's the weirdest you gave the kids like the weird <clears throat> Oreo flavors that they've come out with, those Swedish oh, okay. fish Oreos, those were gross. Oh, um, man. I don't even want to think about that. I wish it was just a vanilla cookie. I have feelings about this. But anyway, that's for another. We could do a whole show on Oreo, weird Oreo flavors. But that was the one that Caitlin looked at me at like I had had committed a crime. <laughs> she looked at me like, why did you let me eat this? That was – and she just looked at me and she's like – it was like eye contact and i'm like what yeah. she's like this is disgusting and she walked out of the room it was like she was big mad at me for that one and it was really 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 funny big yeah. mad i uh i i did something similar uh i got uh coconut water from, from oh store. my kids love that stuff did and yours not like it no it caught them completely <gasps> off guard i don't know what they were expecting uh but it's like they've seen it on tv people drinking from coconuts and all that. And, right. and I was like, yeah, I, I love coconut water. I used to drink it all the time, you know, Puerto Rican. It's like one of those things. Sure, 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 so, sure. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, yeah. And, and my kids, they swear they're not Puerto Rican. That's, that's like a conversation that we're going to have to have with them one day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look, kids, I hate, I hate to do this to you, but um, <laughs> oh man, yeah, just, they, uh, the the wild. oldest the oldest is the the funniest with that. He's he he swears up and down. He's like, I'm not Puerto Rican, and it's like we we tell him all like <laughs> my wife is like, oh, but you are, like, you are. you're you're my son and you're daddy's son. So daddy is Puerto Rican, so you're Puerto Rican. No, that's not how it works. It's like, oh my god, this is gonna be a rough, <laughs> a rough explanation. I love the idea that this child is gonna have like an argument with a biology teacher yeah. at some point in the future about how like <laughs> science works. Like that's my favorite thing about this. Um, uh, but but yeah, so anyway, much. he he was he was ve he was very uh like they were very excited to try out the coconut water, and they were they were all giddy and all like you know to try it, and as soon as like they they got it like in their mouth they just freaked out like they weren't expecting that's really funny trying to think if my children have <clears throat> ever like really 
Like I, I didn't intend to trick them with the Swedish fish Oreos. I wanted like a general, like a, a real reaction because I think stuff like that is too uh, a bridge too far, and mm. people who make it are monsters. <laughs> but they, we, but they've tried almost every weird flavor with me. That's my favorite thing to do with them. It's like, all right, well, this one's supposed to taste like cotton candy, so here we go, you know. <laughs> and they'll they'll give me an honest opinion, and most of the honest opinions are, well, it tastes like sugar, so it's good. Mm, yep, they're kids. But the Swedish fish one, I, she really did look at me like I had just told her that like her favorite animal had died. Like I, <laughs> the eye contact, just she just stared me down like mm-hmm. I had committed a crime. It was so good. I love I, her so much. I never, I never even heard of the like that. Just thinking Swedish fish Oreos makes me cringe. Like I don't. They were don't disgusting. It was a chocolate it. cookie with a Swedish fish flavored cream. Oh my god! Jeez. If it had been a vanilla cookie, it wouldn't have been as mm. awful um it was bad <laughs> so, <laughs> like sounds like medicine like the way it tasted mm, medicinal yes yeah. it had that like luden's cough drop flavor to <clears throat> yeah oh, that's what oh, i pictured oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> so bad we, i feel we... still betrayed and angry about that particular oreo <laughs> <laughs> we have uh we have somebody in the community uh denise uh denise and, and vince they live in in the netherlands and they don't get all the the crazy wacky Oreo flavors over there. Right, hey, right. <clears throat> like we we like would talk about in the this into the Discord, and and it's like they would go, no, we don't have any of that. And we sent them a care package one day uh, from from us over here in in Florida. It had like a few different treats in there and stuff, and there were no crazy flavors of course at the time right so it was right. just like birthday flavor birthday cake or whatever <clears throat> but uh but i was really hoping like when we sent that out that there was like some crazy crazy off the wall flavor on the shelf and there wasn't and swedish fish that would have that would have won <laughs> that would have been like guaranteed them never never come visit to america it was so bad <laughs> It was like offensively terrible. Um, Canada also doesn't get all our weird Oreos. And I have some Canadian friends and they're like, what is happening down there? I'm like, I think these are the people who got rejected from like scientific positions in government to, to solve real problems. Like, and what, what's happening is that they're just, they're taking out all of their hatred upon your face. I actually read a really interesting article that the reason that Oreo puts out all of these flavors is to sell more of their standard cookie. Uh, people buy people it. buy the weird flavor and they're like ugh but then they go remember how good oreos are and mm-hmm. they buy packages of oreos and it's like a <laughs> dirty evil thing that they're doing and i hate it but i love oreos mm. so much well now i want some oreos i'm gonna go eat oreos after yeah. this but i should be going <laughs> to sleep so <laughs> yeah it's it's about that time looks like uh the red light is blinking so <laughs> just means it's recording it's fine yeah it's fine <laughs> so uh so this this was a fun little short episode i uh, it is mm-hmm. it's it's something that i feel like we needed after after the the realness of of last week's episode or you know last hour <laughs> for us so uh so i i appreciate hanging out later on uh you know and 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 just talking talking goofy stuff and you know going through that so thank you it's a blast i always appreciate you having me here yeah yeah i and and i want to have you again uh for summer summertime uh because i think the first first time i got at you to to come visit the show here it was so we could talk about ice cream and and different ice cream flavors and stuff and we do need to do that i feel like that would be a good episode to have uh closer to summertime so so, uh, so, you know, maybe we got to plan that out and see, see what we can do with that. Cause that sounds like something that we would both, uh, enjoy pretty much. <laughs> Hell yeah. Ice cream episode. Definitely here for it. Yep. So, uh, so thank you very much, Elaine. Uh, if you would like to go ahead, pimp, pimp out all your stuff, uh, where, where everybody could find you. Sure. So if you like video games and you want to listen to a podcast about them, uh, I am co-hosting a show called The Xbox Empire. We're part of the Play Some Video Games Network of Podcasts. You can put us in your Google machine and find us on almost any podcast service. I'm certain of it. Uh, If you want my general thoughts on snacks, games, (laughs) 
and occasionally something that might actually be insightful. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter. I'm ET Dragon on Twitter. I also retweet all the podcast episodes. So if that's your happy place or your chosen hellscape, uh, then you, that's the best place to follow me. So that's where you can hang out with me. There you go. All right. I appreciate it again. Thank you very much for joining me. It's been fun. Was an absolute blast. I will hope I'll be back. I'll be back. I'll be back. It's a promise. <laughs> All right. Have a good night. Bye.